G'day everyone. Day 7, Barkhausen Noise. Originally I was working on uh, seeing if the, I could detect the electrical analogue of the normal magnetic Barkhausen effect. So the Barkhausen effect is basically um, the discrete changes in the magnetization of ferromagnetic materials and other core materials as the magnetization ramps up. So there's a couple of different ways it can actually happen, but the way that you normally see described is, you know, magnetic materials are made out of a bunch of domains that are randomly oriented until the external field starts to align them. And at different scales, that there's different things going on, but essentially as the um, domains reorient or grow and shrink with respect to each other, there are defects in the lattice or other areas that cause pinning of magnetic fields, or there's actually like phase change of large groups of magnetic domains that, that can either flip all together or not, right? So there can be cascade effects or there can be actual flux lattice like, um, you know, pinning going on. So as one domain grows, you know, with respect to another domain, eventually it runs into one of these defects. Then the, uh, the defect kind of pins the, the change, the growth of the, that phase compared to the other phase. It's oriented in a different direction. And then eventually the, uh, the magnetic magnetization will become sufficient to cause the, uh, the domain wall to progress beyond that pinning defect. And there's a rapid change in the external um, visible magnetic field so in the core, outside the core as well. So this causes noise because those transients, when they happen, happen very quickly. The magnetic field is no longer you know, nice and um, gently increasing as say the magnetic magnetization field the, the h field basically from the outside that a current might be applying as a current's ramping up through an inductor h is growing and the actual um, field in inside the you know the magnetic domains is not necessarily going up it's actually going up in these little staircase steps and these transients um, produce a, a noise in your circuit that you can well, sometimes it's annoying. I mean, it, certainly magnetometer applications, it can be very annoying. But um, it's also kind of interesting, though, just from a, a purely physics point of view. To detect it, you don't actually need much, right? Really, you just need well, like an audio amplifier and a, and a core. Here, I took some artist wire, um, you know, the kind of the florist might use to, to tie uh, flowers. I cut off about 10 pieces of that and then I wrapped it with about 300 turns of uh, 30 gauge magnet wire. This is kind of barely adequate, but as we see, if I approach this with a magnet <laughs> until it sticks to it, um, there's actual, you can hear the Barkhausen noise as the domains flip over. And if I approach it with the other side, Note that if I come at it, once I've like flipped all those domains over, the remnants in the core means that I don't get any more Barkhausen noise until I exceed that, you know, I, I go a little bit farther and I get more domains getting flipped over. And then if I turn it around and I start magnetizing in the opposite direction, I have noticed that in sometimes when I when I start to get close, and I'm probably starting to saturate the core, that withdrawing the magnet does cause some domains to flip. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, or if it's just like the, the reduction in magnetization is causing some Barkhausen noise as well. Like maybe you know certain domains are growing relative to others, and then when they start to back down, there's pinning in the opposite direction. But the remnants is definitely there. And then if I flip, yeah, uh, oddly enough, I didn't actually have to go to the trouble of doing this. My emo meter oops, has a, a little feature where it does this as well. Unfortunately, it has a mechanical resonance, so if I damp the, magnet, the mechanical resonance with my finger,
And that's the ferrite that's in the core of the, um, the magnetic sensor here. It's a soft ferrite, so I'm not entirely... I guess it doesn't have very noticeable remnants. So I guess that makes sense, right? Like if it would have significant remnants, it would have more of that effect where you can approach it and then you have to get closer than your previous approach to actually start generating noise again. Anyway, what I wanted to do is see if there was an electric version of this effect. So I tried the really basic thing of you know charging and discharging a capacitor with a sine wave and then I had a resistor in series and looked to see if I could see any... Um, transients in this charging process and so far I, I haven't been able to I mean there's some challenges about how to do this exactly like in terms of you know rejecting the, this signal or um, you know noise coming in through this because you have these are fairly small signals so you have to amplify this a lot and potentially you know one way to see very small changes in, in charge that's passing through this capacitor as it charges, is to have a fairly large resistance, but that's kind of at odds with the whole noise thing. So I thought about another approach where you would use an inductor. Um, so at the low frequencies that you're charging and discharging the capacitor at, it really looks like a short circuit, but each of these transients is a much more high frequency effect and it will cause this tank circuit to ring. And you can damp that a little bit to give it a bit of a more broadband response so that the exact width of each of those transients is not as critical and then amplify this with an RF amplifier. So this I'm still working on, I haven't got it to work yet, but I don't see any reason why it won't work because it's very, very similar to the way partial discharge um, experiments are done. Now, partial discharge is a very common way of assessing the health of the dielectrics in, say, power transformers and capacitors and all kinds of things in industry. Basically, you know, if you have a dielectric material and there's some kind of defect in it, either you know, at the plates or in the body of the material, before the entire capacitor or, or other, you know, if this might be a transformer winding or whatever, before the whole thing flashes over and destroys the, the dielectric, these little areas where there are defects will have these micro flashovers in between and your know, charge will be redistributed. So you kind of have the electrical version of this where you've got the main capacitance of the dielectric and then you have, you know, the capacitance to this side of the defect and then you have the capacitance and this side of the defect so that's two capacitors in series basically a capacitance and then you have the capacitance of the defect and you consider that basically a defect that has a spark gap across it so as it's charging up and down this will discharge and there'll be there'll be some fairly small you know maybe hundreds or thousands of picocoulombs of charge will get dumped across these defects and that produces you know a current pulse in or in or out of the capacitor depending on the polarity so there's, this will generate RF noise, essentially, um, far away from the frequency of operation. The, the rise times are generally in you know, unit to 10 nanoseconds, and they're relatively easy to separate from the you know, mains power frequencies. So there are various techniques where they either try and pick up VHF or UHF noise generated by this process, or they put current transformers or these kind of series inductor um, tapping schemes and quite often they'll be hooked up to a machine that looks a little bit like an oscilloscope and inside that oscilloscope it will display the mains waveform and then it will do wherever one of these events these little clicks happens where these um, dielectrics flash over they'll mark that as a histogram relative to the um the mains waveform and you'll have you know a mains waveform that i guess it kind of you know it looks like a sine wave right like this and then where you won't have many flashovers, you know, the flashovers will occur as the voltage comes up. So there won't be many near the zero crossings, but there'll be some, you know, kind of in this region, and they'll they'll tend to be also in the opposite um, region. You know, they'll be here and here, kind of thing. And they will generally won't happen on the the downward, um, you know, returning closer to zero for the uh, the voltage that's impressed upon the device because at that point you know the capacitors already f the little micro capacitor is flashed over and discharged but yeah anyway i think this is an interesting idea and i'd like to um look at it further i'm sure that there are ferroelectric capacitor materials that have these kind of defects that are analogous to the the ones in ferro magnets but uh, so far with the capacitors that i've tried at least 
you know, the ones in the junk box. I haven't been able to find it, but uh, I'm sure that there's information out there for other material science applications where someone has probably tried this before, but so far I haven't been able to find much information on it. Alrighty. More tomorrow. See you later.